and welcome to Leicester's 2016 movies. I saw Suicide Squad yesterday. I was very excited for this movie. The trailers, they made it look awesome. And after the um, massive fart of a movie that Batman vs Superman was, I was, I was hoping that DC would, you know, get back on the... make some... make, make a good one. And it was good. I liked it. But it wasn't as good as I thought it was going to be. It, it wasn't... no, it wasn't nearly as good as I thought it was going to be. There was... there was way too much that they tried to cram into this movie, it, it, which it suffered from. And it took a long time to get to where, where I wanted it to be. And when it got there, it didn't stay there very long. And I wouldn't say I wouldn't say anything was unnecessary in the movie. It was just too much of it, and not enough team dynamic. I guess it was what I wanted. What it what it could have benefited from was a Batman movie set before Man of Steel, with the Joker and Harley Quinn in, to first of all establish Batman in this universe. So they. They didn't have to waste time doing that in Batman vs Superman. They could have they could have jumped ahead a couple of steps in that film. So we could have got to know the Joker a bit and Harley Quinn. So we didn't have all that cluttering up this film, which we needed. But it it took time out of the plotline of of this one. You know the Batman movie could have ended with Harley Quinn getting uh, captured and the Joker getting away and the Joker being all like, oh I'm gonna break her out. Don't worry. And then you know that would have set up this one. That would have been good, I think, but never mind, didn't happen. Another thing they could have done with was more Slipknot, because he was in it for five minutes. Spoilers, although I think this is pretty clear this is going to happen anyway. Slipknot dies very soon after being introduced. The rest of the Suicide Squad are set up by Amanda Waller in an exposition scene uh, right at the start of the movie. She's like, so here we've got this one, and then they'll have a little graphic their details and do a bit of backstory about them. And they've got this one, and they have a graphic backstory. None of that for Slipknot. He's only introduced when the rest of the squad are like, you know, they're all assembled, and they're like, oh, and there's this guy as well. He, he, do, he does ropes. And he's like, all right. And then he's like, actually, you know, screw this. Rope. Boom, and they blow, and they blow, and then he's gone. He's gone, that's it. He, he was, all he was was um, cannon fodder. He was just to show that the bombs in the necks were real. Which is fine, but they could have set it up like he wasn't going to die, so that it would have been a surprise. We were all just expecting that to happen. While I'm speaking about disproportionate character screen time, there was a lot of Deadshot in this movie. Uh, which I'm not complaining about, but I, I will say that we've seen guys who are good at shooting. We've seen that before. We've seen... Criminal who's got a daughter, so he kind of wants to be good for his daughter, but he also wants to be a criminal We've seen that before and we've seen Will Smith before a lot. He's been in a lot of things We've seen this like I enjoyed watching his character, but I would have I wouldn't have minded sacrificing a bit of his screen time for you know the likes of Captain Boomerang who I would have loved to see more of because he was funny, but he didn't he didn't really get any character development. He didn't get fleshed out at all. Like, where's he come from? He's just an Australian that just turns up. Good day, mates. Boomerang. Would have liked to see more Katana. Who who was she? Oh, she's a, a woman with a with a soul sword. Hi guys. I'll kill you all. All right. Would have liked to see more Killer Croc. He didn't have many lines. I would have liked to see more of those three, especially Captain Boomerang. I know I'm making it sound like I don't like this movie, but apart from all of those things I've just mentioned, and the fact that 90% of the jokes were in the trailers, I enjoyed this movie. So I'm going to place it on the chart, uh, but before I do, I'm going to rearrange the middle section of the chart, because I, it's, been, it's been bugging me for a while that certain films are higher than other films that deserve to be higher. So here's the chart as it stands, and I'm going to do this. And as you can see, 10 Cloverfield Lane is much higher, because after I came out of the cinema I was like, oh, oh, what was that I just watched? Uh, but after thinking about it for quite a long time, I was like, actually that was really well made and that was really good and I actually really enjoyed it. 
Um, so that's going higher. Angry Birds is lower because I got out of the cinema and I was like, whoa, what a, what a colourful, fast-paced, haha film. Woo! Uh, but then after thinking about it, I was like, actually, no, it wasn't that great, was it? Jungle Book's higher. That deserved more, more, more praise than I gave it. And so I'm going to place Suicide Squad. Oh, I haven't even thought about this yet. Where am I going to put it? Um, I think I'll put it here between 10 Cloverfield Lane and The Jungle Book. Because I did actually like it, even though it was a bit of a mess. Did you agree? Uh, because there was a lot of... Oh, I didn't talk about the Joker! He was fine. He was good. He was fine. Um, I had high hopes, but he didn't actually disappoint. But he didn't really enthrall me either. He wasn't an outstanding character, but he wasn't bad. Heath Ledger's still the best, but Jared Leto is good as well. I'd like to see more. Yeah, I'd like to see more. That's what I think of the Joker. Did you agree with what I said? If not, post it in the comments. I'll cry. Uh, if you did, post it in the comments and I'll not cry. And join me next time on Leicester's 2016 movies where I probably won't cry. But no promises. <laughs>